Hi there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on something pretty darn cool. A little bit of retro action going on. Uh, we're gonna continue on with our dwarves. Uh, and um, you can see here we've painted up some of our Battle for Skull Pass models. And they've kind of painted them up in the same scheme basically. Uh, we've got the old school Thunders and we've got the old school uh, Dwarf Warriors. And what I'm going to do is I'm using these guys right now for long beards. I've got the actual long beards and I'll switch them back to warriors uh, once we kind of get, um, I'm thinking of maybe using the, the dispossessed stuff out of the uh, 2019 General's Handbook and uh, also the um, kind of the dispossessed stuff out of the uh, order book. So um, they may go back to being uh, dwarf warriors and thunderers, but for right now, just for everybody's kind of on board, I'm using these guys as my Iron Drakes and these guys as my Long Beards because that's what's in the Cities book. Now, also in the Cities book is the Hammers set, and I love these models. So uh, I've got them on round bases here, which is pretty rad. Um, we've got kind of a, I've kind of fleshed out the. Um, uh, you know, the the, the banner here, uh, instead of just having the one icon on there, we actually got a little bit more. Still not 100% sold on that, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but you can see here what I've done is I've taken some of the shields and I've mounted them on the mount points. Uh, and just because I've had a whole bunch of these kicking around and I wanted them all to be in kind of a similar vein. Anyway, I got 20 of these guys here and um, they're all kind of monoposy, which is hilarious. Um, but in the end, I do think it's pretty awesome that they are, um, you know, just kind of running out there <laughs> full tilt. And this is how they do, they're my counter charge unit. Um, so they run out there full t tilt uh, with the uh, hammers uh, held aloft and held high. So uh, as you can see, we've got loads going on. Uh, the detail on these guys is fantastic. I love the beards. And to be absolutely honest, the thing I miss the most about the new models uh, that I love on these guys is they've all got their little tankards there because, um, you know, they're a bunch of uh, beer-loving uh, madmen. So I love that. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get them all primed up. And I'm going to come back and I'll just give you my quick step-by-step -step, uh, painting them. As a matter of fact, I'm eliminating a couple of the colors out of the palette. Um, so it should be a lot, uh, <laughs> it should be a lot faster for us to paint them. We're going to do like a King's Guard kind of uh, kind of paint scheme for them so that they definitely stand out on the field uh, as opposed to all the other guys that are kind of just uh, doing their thing. So um, yeah, stay tuned and uh, we'll get going. All right, so starting again, um, what we're going to do is uh, anywhere we have the mail. Now we typically did this in like a, a lead belcher and gold before, uh, but because I want a little bit of a different look and feel, for what is essentially the King's Guard, uh, these hammerers here, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do all of their mail up in gold. Uh, and I'm going to do that because I just want a little bit of a different look, a little more kind of Royal Guard-y, I guess. Uh, next up, we'll do any of the little belt buckles or any of the little kind of sigils. Uh, as you see them along, uh, you'll see them on the... Um, you know, on the belts here. Some have, you know, little coins or little bits of, you know, kind of gold all the way around those belts there. Uh, sometimes they just have the, the you know, the, the, the leather belting there. Uh, in addition to that, uh, any of the other little details I'll pick out will be any of the symbology on the shields. Of course, we'll get that in there. My paint's a little thin, but that's all right. And again, I'm going to be fairly kind of sloppy and messy around this. I'm just going to come back in with color after and just kind of fill in the, the big open spaces. It's a lot easier to do the, um, you know, to do the larger surfaces than to kind of pick out the smaller detail surfaces. So I'll uh, make sure that I got that nice and clean. I'll finish off the mail down here clearly. Okay. Um, and then any of the trim on the helmets, it's going to be next. So. I'm just going to go in here and just sneak in that trim on the helmets here. All right, and then uh, I'll fill that in with the silver later. Okay, and the other thing I really want to make sure I get is each of the hammers you'll see is kind of segmented. Uh, you've got the center part of the hammer, you've got that little bit of iconography there, and then you've got these caps on them. And again, just to kind of call a little bit of extra detail, uh, I'm going to put I'm going to kind of call out that extra detail on the hammers so they'll all be capped with gold. Man, not only are we rich, we're going to hit you with our wealth. 
So this was uh, the footage that was lost, but uh, not only am I picking out little details uh, on the belts and all of that, and I'm doing the helmets uh, on the horn here. I'm just going to do any of the kind of the little banding that's here. I'll do that in the gold. I just kind of give it a little bit more flair, and you'll see that on our horn, there's lots of little um, these little embellishments here, these little kind of uh, little bits of decoration. I'll make sure I get those guys uh, individually as well. And then for our banner. Uh, anytime you see like a little rune uh, or you'll see, um, you know, like the, the, the big kind of uh, symbology or anything like that, there's no paint left on my brush. Uh, but we'll go in here and we'll get all of this as well. So I'm going to base coat this all in gold uh, and then we'll come back and work on the silver. All right. So after that frustration of kind of losing that video um I, I i was just pretty ticked off uh it did feel good however to kind of get that gold down and get some progress on the models anyway sometimes you get these little setbacks you're like ah and you just get all cranky and, and and pissy about it but um i think sometimes you know you just get some progress down and you get a little bit of momentum and it tends to feel a load better so okay so what we're going to work on now is we're going to work on the other parts of the metallics. And this is really going to add a lot of, uh, you know, kind of distinction and color to the models. What I'm loving about painting the dwarf guys is that there's not, I mean, there's not a whole lot to them in terms of multiple colors, in terms of like way lots of detail, things like that. So they really come together quickly, which I think is just, well, I think it's just fantastic, actually. All right. So now what we're going to do is working on the silver part. We're going to grab our lead belcher. And we're going to work on all that like zesty, tasty Gromril armor. Uh, now, I did mention at the bottom here that we're going to be dodging. I'll start, you know, moving these guys back a little bit. I mentioned at the bottom here that we're going to be... Um, you know, just trying to kind of get as much of the, you know, kind of finer details in as we can. Um, so I'll continue that on here, obviously, with the shields. Uh, we'll go in here and we'll make sure that we get that ring around the outside of the shields. We'll also sneak in, because we've got the shields mounted on the back. It's a little bit tricky, but we'll get in here uh, in behind the shields as well. Now, the heads for each of the hammers. Uh, we'll basically do the rest of the hammers... Uh, in the silver and we'll save uh, anything that's for the the actual handle of the hammer itself uh, that'll be done in like a wooden color but basically we'll just top up all the kind of components on the hammers that aren't decorative with a lead belcher continuing down the model anything that isn't got that gold trim on it We'll sneak in there with a little lead belcher and finish up the helmets. Okay, and then we'll do the Gromril chest armor here. A thing that makes them so hard in combat. And you can really see that detail is just now starting to spring out uh, on the model, which is great. It definitely feels like you're making progress once you get some of your base colors down. And then, of course, my favorite part of these models in particular little tankards they have with them you do not want to go into battle as a dwarf without your tankard of ale dwarven ale mm. you know a good beer always makes things just a little bit easier i think in life <laughs> it's got to be tasty though tasty beer now if you've got any banners that aren't uh wooden uh, of course we'll do those in this lead belcher color here all the little pole bits and pieces on the inside and then of course you can go around and grab any of the other details in here now uh, i was looking at a cool horn like using the kind of the bone types of colors uh, but these guys are going to be in the thick of combat all the time every time so i figure i'll do their horns in that silver as well you don't want anything going wrong while you're Kind of chanting the praises of your thane there. All right, so I'll go around. I'll make sure I get all the helmets, the the hammers, the Gromril chest pieces, the shields, uh, the tankards, the all important tankards, and of course any other metallic pieces. Um, again, where I could usually do something like softer, like a bone or something like that, uh, I'm definitely going to go with a um, with a silver. Uh, one, it keeps the color count down a little bit, and it makes a little more sense that these guys are harder, so you'd want them to show up as a little bit more metallic on the field. Uh, that's why we kind of went with the gold 
uh, for the arms and uh, and kind of the skirts around the legs there. All right, so I'll continue on and we'll come back and start putting in the finer colors. Okay, so you can see now once we've got that silver in, we're making some real progress now, which is fantastic. Um, the next major color that I want to do is the reds. Uh, and I want to do the reds uh, simply because we're not going to do any beards uh, based in the Mephiston red. I think it would uh, it would just match too much with the rest of the uh, rest of the guys here. Um, we've got our other guys, and you can see here that we've done the red for the shields and then the red for their sleeves. And you do see some red, but it's not an overwhelming amount of it, which is which is fine. So instead of doing like a red beard, I'm going to do more of a kind of gingery orange. Uh, that way we can still see the beard and it doesn't get blended in with our, our colors. So uh, for these guys here, I want to use Mephiston Red and I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to do the shields uh, just like I've done with the other ones there so they kind of match up. Uh, the other thing that I want to do with the reds is I was thinking because we'll be seeing these guys from above, where's a good example? These guys here, because we'll be seeing these guys from above, I want to do the cloth inside of their sleeves there, in uh, or inside of the, the, the mail there. I want to do that in red as well. Uh, and what that'll do is that'll just give us a little bit more of a distinct kind of look from above since the old guys have all their hammers up in the air. So you'll definitely see that red and it'll be a lot more characterful, you know, because, uh, you know, they want to really show off the fact that they're the elite guard. All right, so once you got the sleeves done on both sides there, and you can always come back in and touch up if you kind of go into the gold or you missed a spot before, as you can see here, I missed loads of the gold. Um, but uh, you can always come back and kind of touch up. Uh, but the next thing I want to do is do the armor. Now, we did the gold and then we did the silver. And make sure you get a nice fine tip on your brush. And all we're going to do now is just tuck into the detail. And we're going to make sure that we paint this larger area. But we're not going to go onto the silver and we're not going to go on the gold. Now instead of picking out all that fine detail, it's a lot easier just to tuck your pointy paintbrush into the corners there. And again, if you get some on the silver, that's fine. We're going to be doing the majority of the detail work uh, right at this phase anyway. So we'll just tuck that in and tuck that in there. And I'll just keep kind of working my way around. Just like that. And if you get a bit on, you can either wipe with your thumb or you can go back in and touch up with the main colors. Uh, other bits of note here, I'm also going to do the banner. So I'll do that in a nice bright red to really kind of highlight that gold iconography that I have there. And again, instead of trying to pick out all that fine detail, I can just tuck the red color in to those little segments there and it makes it look as if I painted that detail very carefully but in reality I'm just kind of painting that larger area leaving that detail intact it's a lot easier to paint that larger area than it is to uh, go in there and just do it individually all right, so I'll continue through. I'll finish off the banner here and then I'll uh, go through and make sure I got all the sleeves and kind of the insides of the sleeves as well. Uh, there's no extra cloth on these guys, but on some of the older dwarf models, uh, there's cloth kind of hanging down at the bottom. Anything that's kind of under the armor itself, I'll do in the red. As we continue to kind of truck along and block in the colors, you can see that it's definitely taking shape. Um, yet again, uh, I also like the fact that with the shields and the uh, inside of the, the sleeves and the, in the, the shirts on the inside, you can see that that red really becomes a prominent color from above, which is exactly what we're looking for. It's unique and it's a little bit different. And yeah, it works out just fine. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we're going to use Katie and Flesh Tome and we're going to just do the flesh components which again are super simple because most of our guys are covered up. And um, you wanna make sure your paint's a little bit on the thin side and we can just go in there and just kind of blap it in. Uh, now, the reason that uh, I'm gonna be a little kind of fast and furious here, I'll do the face, the nose, and the mouth is uh, one of my paints a little bit thinner so it shouldn't clog up the details uh, as much. Um, the other thing that I like about it is I'm going to be coming in with the beard colors immediately after this. And so um, if you get a little bit on the beard, that's uh, that's totally fine. Anyway, I'll work my way through these guys. A very fast and easy step in the process here. 
Okay, so now we're moving on to the creative part of this process. Um, I've got a couple issues. Uh, the first one is, is that I've got lots of duplicate poses, so I've kind of lined them all up here um, so that they're all lined up. Uh, good job, me. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is going to go in and say, okay, well, now, since i got duplicate poses, the way that I'm going to deal with that is the way that I've always kind of dealt with it. Um, just use different colors. Um, G-Dub does this with all their starter sets where you get duplication, you name it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start with five different types of kind of hair and beard color. Okay, I've got my white, I've got kind of a, a brown, I've got like a light brown or like a dark blonde, I've got a black and I've got like a, an orangey one as well. And uh, they really, you know, kind of make the models pop out and look original and different. Uh, when you're looking down, I mean, geez, even even though they're duplicate poses in these lines, they've all got their hammers up in the air. They're all most of them are wielding these kind of rounded hammers, things like that. So my goal here is to split things up so that it's not so uh, so samey. Now the other little thing that's a bit of a challenge is as we go through. Uh, we've got a bunch of different colors that we're going to be kind of playing with. I'm going to start with my ones that I'm not going to use anywhere else on the model. So, for example, uh, the Ultimon Gray will be for the whiter beards. Uh, the Troll Slayer Orange will be for the orangey beards. And then the Eshin Gray will be for the black beards. Um, I'm not going to start with a black and then highlighted Eshin Gray. I'll just wash it down from the gray. Anyway, I'm going to start with those first. And uh, but before I do that... Um, and then I've got, of course, my browns are going to be kind of the Carrick Stone for the blonde and the Dryad Bark for the darker browns. But I'm going to use these uh, throughout the models uh, as well. So let's, uh, let's just kind of focus on these ones first. All right, so um, for the white beards, uh, again, I don't want too many of them. I think a lot of dwarfs don't make it to that kind of era at that time in their lives. Um, so my first row here, I'm going to do white beards. So I'll do three at the white, three at the orange, and then the more commonly uh, colored beards, I'll work my way uh, kind of down. So I'll use uh, the blonde, the uh, brown, and the black at the back there. So um, working with the colors that we have already, um, let's grab these guys. So this is just going to be hair color here. For the first three so i'm going to use my ultra on gray and i'm just going to work on the beards for these guys now i think this is a better white than most whites um it gives uh a little bit more of a, a deeper uh a deeper white kind of a more pigmented white um and it's great because when it's washed it looks really really good so I'll work in here and I'll do all the beards for my first three guys here. Uh, beards and any hair that's kind of off to the side. I'll do it all in white. All right, now with those first three kind of out of the way, I'm just going to set them off to the side because we're not done with them necessarily. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to Troll Slayer Orange. And again, because we're not going to be necessarily using these uh, colors, uh, on the rest of the models, the uh, beard and hair is just an easy, easy do. All right, so again, same process. I'll just be going over the hair on these guys. All right, with the ginger beards out of the way, move these guys off to the side. Uh, I'll go on to the next color here, uh, and that's going to be the Eshin Gray uh, for the blacks. And uh, I'm just going to choose these four at the back because I want the more common ones to be the browns uh, just because it stands out against all that gold and red uh, a little bit more. Uh, so again, same drill, um, using the Eshin Gray here, going after the hair and the beards, uh, and this will be the black. Uh, as I mentioned before, it will, um, uh, it, 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 we're not going to be doing the black and then kind of highlighting the black. We're going to start with the uh, Eshin Gray and we'll just low light that as part of the wash process. And it saves us doing an extra step and I think it gets a very similar uh, similar result anyway. All right, so I'll do Eshin Gray on these four guys. Okay, so we got that Eshin Gray on the uh, beards and hair there. Um, and now we're gonna start moving into colors that we're going to be using kind of throughout the model. So I like to do this all as one pass. So let's start with our Carrick Stone here and um, this one is basically going to be for um, obviously the blonder kind of beards. Um, so we'll get going on that. 
and we'll also use it for things like uh, rope or bone. Uh, so for example, if we've got uh, any other, uh, if we've got any ropes or if we've got uh, the foundation for bone like um, horns on a helmet or something like that, uh, we'll definitely get that in there. So I'll put this on the beards, uh, a couple thin coats, never hurts. And then um, as I work around uh, on these little, some uh, are using belts, some uh, of these guys have belts uh, or strapping and some are using ropes to tie on their uh, tankards or their weapons or something like that. So I'm just going to go in here and I'll use the uh, Carrick Stone to do the ropes as well. I'm also going to use it as the back for the banner here. Uh, this is going to be kind of a linen-y type color. So I'll put the Carrick Stone on the back of my banner here. Uh, a lot of the beards here, they'll be tied off. And uh, I'm going to use the darker brown, the Dryad Bark, uh, to, to do the ties. Um, but if I have a dark beard, like this guy here, then what I'll do is I'll use uh, Carrick Stone here to do the ties on the dark beards. Uh, I'll even be able to kind of pre-do, even though we're coming with a dark beard later, I can pre-do the ties on this guy uh, because I know I'm going to be coming in with that, um, that deep brown, that Dryad Bark there. So the last color we're going to play with now is uh, Dryad Bark and um, it's actually pretty awesome in the sense that it's going to cover up the majority of the last of our base coats. So not only will we be doing the beards on the last uh, chunk of dudes, um, we got a whole bunch of other little things that are actually kind of relying on this as kind of a, kind of a leathery substance. So a little bit different than say a, a black. So, uh, what types of things are we going to use them on? Uh, anything that involves kind of like leather uh, strapping, we'll do with the Dryad Bark. Um, a little bit more character than say the black, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, you'll see here I got little bits of bar um, bark. I've got little bits of strapping kind of all the way through. Okay, and of course I'm making a mess because I'm just clutching it in there. Um, so I'll do all the strapping that you'll see there. Uh, you'll see also, uh, some of the belts, these guys here are all kind of gold. Uh, let's find one here that's really good. Yeah, this guy here. So uh, this guy here, any of the belting uh, will do in the Dryad Bark uh, as well. Okay, the actual belt itself here. Okay. Uh, we'll do all the um, uh, beards, obviously, uh, for these guys because we wanted that kind of darker beard. So we'll go in here and we'll get the beards. And before I finish uh, that, uh, we'll also jot, dive in here and we'll go after the uh, gloves. So anything that's got that kind of hard leathery look to it, um, we'll do with the Dryad Bark. I'll also go in and do the boots. Again, anything that's got that kind of leathery um, we did the ropes before with the uh, Carrick Stone. But anything that's got that kind of hard leather, kind of boiled leather look, we're going to use the Dryad Bark for. All right, I'll finish off the beards, the boots, the gloves, any strapping. Uh, there's a couple guys with change, pur change purses just kind of, you know, peeking out from their armor and all of that uh, from underneath the belts. I'll do the change purses in... Uh, the Dryad Bark as well. Any of the little uh, kind of satchels or pouches or anything like that. Uh, they'd be done up in that same kind of leather. All right, so gloves, satchels, belts. Some of these guys get beards. The last of the guys get the beards. Oh, and then on the lighter armor, I'm oh, sorry, the lighter beards, we're going to go with um, uh, all the bands. We're going to do that in the dark, the dryad bark there as well. All right, so we've got the blocks of the colors uh, kind of all in now. We've just got one major color left. That is our Steel Legion drab. And we're just going to do that on the wooden parts, uh, but there's not a lot of wood on these guys. It's just going to be um, just kind of the hefts of those hammers there. Uh, and we're just going to do those wooden components on there. Now, because we've done the gloves already, it's going to be quite easy to just kind of go in and paint around the gloves. 
kind of sneak in the hands there and uh, yeah we'll work our way around so what I'll do is I'll also go in um, there's a couple things before we wash obviously I'll, I'll carry this out uh, amongst all the guys um, but uh, before I wash uh, there's a couple things I want to get to let's get these little hidden guys up here too um, what I'd like to do though is just go through and you'll see on some of the guys I could do a little bit more gold around the uh, the male there you'll see some of these guys I missed their uh, their nose guards can be done up in gold again so I'm just gonna go around and uh, do kind of that dummy check to make sure I've got everything um, just kind of do all your touch-ups so go through a ton of different paints but I just want to make sure that I got all the little nooks and crannies of these guys I'll do the bases as well and yeah and then we'll get ready to wash so um, I like to wash my bases at the same time as I wash the rest of the models so that's why I'm going to work on them now anyway I'll get on with that and we'll be back to wash okay really really happy with the way these guys ended up turning out um, of course I mean the, the tough thing is to get to this point where you've got your colors all blocked off and then it's just wash and highlights and everything from there it goes much faster but man, the main bulk of the work is just getting to this particular point. I went in and did a dummy check of all of the little nooks and crannies. I turned guys upside down to see if I could find any uh, spots in there. Again, with white primer, it's really nice because you can see essentially what you missed. Now, at any point in time in the process, you can always go back in and find uh, things that you've missed. But um, for now, we're going to move on to washing. Um, definitely my favorite part of the model. I think it gets you into a point where you're looking and you're pretty much tabletop ready after the washing and uh, it works out super super nice so um, the wash I'm going to use is a bit of a homebrew um, I don't like mixing paints in general but for the wash I think it's kind of uh, super worthwhile uh, and what it is is it's 25% um, uh, known oil 25% Agrax Earthshade and the other 50% of that is made up with floor wax um, just any uh, any any old garden variety floor wax will do. I uh, do some testing around for sure, um, but uh, yeah, just go to your uh, local shop and grab it as cheap as you can. Now you'll see that it does tend to pool, um, so I want to kind of get that sucked out right away. You can always use your your brush to go in and kind of suck out the extra detail, or uh, suck out. <laughs> you want the extra detail? Uh, suck out the extra pooling wash. But right away, you can see how it does bring out that detail, uh, and it really makes that model pop. So I work my way around. Uh, make sure you don't end up with any significant pooling like this or like this, um, but still let that shade go in. And you can always come back in and just gently touch up individual spots if you want a little bit more in there. Uh, but the, uh, the flow wax makes for a great flow aid, and it looks really, really good. Okay, so we've got the wash all now completed, and um, you know it really brings out the detail, of course. And they're looking a little muddied right now, but the plan is to ultimately just kind of rebuild in some of that color, and life will be awesome. Um, I've arranged them here by the color of their beards, uh, and the reason that I've done that is because uh, we're going to work our way through. Now, some we don't need to worry about. Uh, the Eshin Gray has been washed down to a black, and we can also see that the white. Uh, here is um, again it's kind of washed down to kind of like a darker gray so we're going to top that up with a uh, white scar we've got the kind of the ginger beards here which we're going to do with fire dragon bright uh, and then we've got the uh, kind of khaki or like the blonde beards uh, we're going to do that with screaming skull and then finally we're going to go after the uh, darker brown beards with the steel legion drab uh, now the reason I've arranged them in this order is because um, again with the black beards here we don't really need to worry about that and there's nothing else on the model that's essentially black so we can immediately go in and write these guys out of that uh, kind of color set uh, what i can do though is i can go after the white beards now uh, and the only time that we're going to really um, you know use the color white is for those beards um, so i'm going to take my uh, white scar here uh, and i'll just do a little bit of a dry brush I'll soak that up there uh, I'll go on to my, uh, my napkin, my uh, paper towel here. I'll just do like a light kind of scraping off of the paint till there's not much left on there. And then I'll just go in here and I'll just go um, basically across the highlights. Um, so I won't go with them because that'll fill in the cracks, uh, but I'll just kind of go over top like this. 
Now, if you get a little bit on the armor, uh, it's not that big of a deal because we are going to come in and top up the other colors, and that's why we're doing that first. Okay, so we can see that the white here, uh, you know, really has a nice pop to it, uh, which is great. And that's the last time we'll use that color, which is fantastic. Uh, next on, we'll move on to the uh, gingery beards here. We're going to use Fire Dragon Bright as our dry brush highlight. And um, I, you know, I like the colors that really come through on the, on the oranges, especially because you can see them from, you know, a mile away. You can see them really showing up on the models. So just get the most of the paint off my brush again, and I'll just go through and do the same routine with the Fire Dragon Bright. And again, if you get a little bit on the other colors, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so the orange looks fantastic, um, really makes those beards pop out. And the next thing we're gonna work on now is the blonde hair, and we're gonna highlight that with Screaming Skull. And there's only one other part on the model that we're going to highlight uh, with the Screaming Skull as well, and that's going to be the the ropes uh, that hold on their little uh, their little tankards there. Okay, so again, I'm just going to wipe that off on my uh, napkin there, and then I'll go in here and I'll just pick out those beards with that light dry brush. And I like having that blonde hair in there because it really brings out that uh, that you know kind of goes in with all the browns that we have in the models. And again, it's not as as harsh as the white but it definitely has just a little bit of extra personality and really does break up those colors. Now with that awesome looking blonde hair on all of our uh, blonde bearded and haired dwarves, uh, the only thing that we have left to do now is uh, just grab like a light dry brush here. And again, just get most of the paint off. And I'm just gonna go after the little ropes that kind of hold up all the tankards here. Now after getting all those ropes in, I guess the only thing we have left here in terms of the beard colors that match the rest of the models is going to be our Steel Legion drab over that, um, that Dryad bark that we had. So that's primarily the gloves, uh, the belts, uh, all of the uh, kind of leathery bits. Uh, but it's also going to be our highlight color for that, uh, for those beards there. So I'll just bring in that uh, kind of dry brushed highlight, bring back a lot of that depth. Uh, and then we'll also do it for the gloves. So just kind of passing them over the fingers. And what's nice about that is it's kind of the base color of the uh, wood for the hammers as well. So if we just get a little bit over, it's not that big of a deal because we're going to come in and highlight that wood uh, as well. So we'll do all the hair, the gloves, and all the little pouches, if you can reach in and grab all those little pouches in there. Oh, and of course we can't forget the shoes here. Just a little touch up on the shoes. All right, so I'll work my way around. I'll get all these browns uh, done. I'll make sure that I've got all the uh, ropes done on all these guys, just kind of do a dummy check on there. And then we'll come back to do the reds and the metallics. All right, so taking a look at our little friend here, you're going to see that, um, you know, with that shading and that, you know, kind of gentle reapplication of color, uh, it's really bringing out a lot of detail uh, in our model here. The gloves are done, the boots are done, um, and of course the beards are done as well. So that's kind of where your eyes get drawn initially. Uh, we have to work on the flesh tones a little bit, but I want to make sure that I've got uh, the metallics kind of down first. So what we're going to do is we're going to address that. Now, normally I would go with a lighter color, but I want that kind of, you know, deep weathered machined kind of look. So what I'm going to do is use lead belcher again here, and I'm just going to go in uh, I'm just going to go in and do uh, a couple of those uh, kind of high points there. So I am going to be overbrushing, which means uh, I'm not going to be repainting. I'm just going to be picking out the higher kind of details and adding a little bit of that sheen back in. Okay. And um, you'll see that'll be especially important with the helmets, right? Uh, and we're just adding a little bit of that base of color back in again. Uh, now on here, you can see it, the wash went a little bit heavier, but when I restore just a little bit of that color, but still keep the recesses, um, it has loads of personality. Now on the shields, uh, we're just going to do just basically that ring around the outside, and we're just going to touch in between the bolts uh, on that shield there, just to restore a little bit of that color back, especially if I went over a little bit with the red there. And finally, those iconic steins, uh, they need a little bit of a touch-up as well. I think those would be the most best-kept pieces anyways. 
Now, continuing on with the overbrushing, I'm going to use fulgurite copper uh, over top of our metallic gold. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is I want well, a lot of people, they'll use highlights, um, you know, they'll use highlight colors and they'll go with like a brighter gold. Or sometimes they'll use like a very bright silver to highlight the gold. Uh, whereas myself, I like using the fulgurite copper because it's got this nice kind of warm, it's got flecks of silver and of gold in there as well. So I'm going to use this for my highlight base here. So again, I'm just going to go in and go, you know, I'll just brush around the, the kind of the skirts there, the bottom parts of the armor. Uh, if I've got any iconography, I'm just going to overbrush again, like a, just going over the highest points there. Okay, uh, I'll go over the armor here as well, and then on the hammers themselves, uh, I'll just go in and I'll kind of repaint if necessary some of those spots that got a little bit too much wash. But I can pick out the edges, but I'm just going to overbrush over some of those details there. The iconography, uh, you know, this, these bolts at the top. You name it. For the helmets, again, it'll be the same thing. I'll just try and sneak in a bit of color in between the bolts there. And then for the iconography on the shield, uh, I'll keep my brush at an angle and I'll just kind of sweep down like this. Just, and again, not repainting it. I want to keep all that beautiful little bits of detail in there. But I'm just kind of overbrushing. It's like a wet dry brush basically over those details okay I'll finish off the metals on all these guys uh, and oh actually before I do that um, if you have you get to a point where you don't have a lot of paint left on your brush after painting the model I'm just gonna kind of just run it over the mail uh, just so I get a little bit of a highlight there but again being very careful not to fill in that detail and you can see we're just popping that color out uh, just a little bit more so as always, as we get these major blocks of color down, uh, just kind of going back and restoring some of the, the highlights that are in there, it really kind of demurkifies your model. It's a technical term, I suppose. Um, but I love the fact that you can really start to see the detail and just get the flavor of the model as it's kind of coming out. So really, really enjoying that process. Also did a bit of dry brushing on the base there to kind of match up my basing scheme. I'll finish that off in, uh, when I'm kind of done the painting. But in general, I'm really loving uh, just the character fullness of these guys. It's uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. Anyway, um, moving on to the uh, few kind of main colors that we have left in terms of colors and the, the non-metallics. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, Katie and Flesh Tone. I'm going to use that now uh, just to kind of reach in there and touch up the face. Now, uh, we could do a lighter tone uh, as well, but I really like the fact that we've got like a darker uh, kind of skin tone, a little bit tougher uh, of a look and feel uh, to these guys here. And this is going to be a pretty simple, pretty straight up uh, process. I'm just going to go in and go after the cheeks, the nose, and maybe the little bits of lips just kind of sticking out of the beard there. The next step is going to be working on the reds. Uh, we don't have a whole lot on these particular models because they're all mailed up, um, but it is nice to have that little bit of extra red up there. So I'm going to use Mephiston Red, and I'm just going to go over, very much like we did with the metallics, uh, I'm just going to go over and do the major uh, kind of highlights, so the major bumps that are kicking out. Uh, and I want to leave a little bit of that recess in there, so that little space that's kind of in, the, in there that's been shaded. Uh, I just want to leave that in there. So that way we get this nice kind of gradation uh, towards that shaded uh, Mephiston Red underneath. And we'll also use the opportunity to do it on the shield as well. Uh, we'll do kind of like a broad swath of that shield. Alright, and we're leaving just enough of that highlight down there so we get that bit of perspective. Bit of depth there. And if you have any mess ups for whatever reason, you can always just tuck that red back in there just to get that little bit of the gold off or a, a bit of those other colors. And then as part of the final touch up, we're going to take some Wild Rider Red as kind of uh, the extreme highlight or if the uh, Mephiston Red was kind of the overall kind of major highlights and these will be just the tiniest kind of highlights. So you want to make sure you got lots of uh, control, maybe a little twist on your brush before you go back in and approach it. Um, but I'm just going to go in here and just kind of give it just that little bit on the folds just so that we can see that there's a little bit of highlight to that. 
Okay, and we can also just reach in here as well, just on the very edge, just to draw your eye out with a little bit more, a little bit more tension there. On the shield itself, I'm just going to do kind of that high midpoint. Just kind of make sure there's not too much paint on my brush, but just call out that kind of midpoint between the transition of the deep red that is shaded and the lighter red kind of in the middle there. All right, so I'll continue on. I might do a little bit of uh, dummy checking around. There's a few things I want to do. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is uh, on a couple of these fingers, there's some rings. So I want to go after those rings in there. And I may go back in with a bit of wash if I need to kind of redefine uh, a few of the areas between the different colors there. All right, so I got the basing all done. I got the clear coat on and uh, these guys are ready for battle. Um, loving the way they turned out. Obviously, um, they match the rest of the army, which is great. They've got that little bit of extra distinction with the skirts here. Uh, just kind of the bottom parts of their tunics there, their, their, their armor, their mail. And um, I think they look great. Uh, you know, they have loads and loads of detail. Again, my favorite detail being the little stein at the back there. Um, but uh, yeah, they come out really, really nicely. Now, they're all kind of got their hammers up old school Warhammer style, which I actually don't mind. I think it's crazy because these guys come rushing in as a counter charge unit and they, uh, they just put the beat down on the guy. So I honestly just picture these guys <laughs> running forward with their hammers up. Uh, absolutely hilarious. Um, but anyway, they are finished. They are done. Um, and it's, man, is it, it's, a, it's a little bit of work to kind of get these all done. But I think the trick is you've just got to stay consistent. Just put a little bit of time in as, to, uh, you know, each time you have a session, just accomplish one thing, get the beards done, you name it. And uh, I think they turned out really, really well. So 20 of them done. Looking forward to seeing those guys out on the field. Uh, and uh, with that, it actually draws a close to my main kind of core of the army. Now I get to work on characters. So yeah, the last big batch paint is finished. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Obviously, if you like this video and you want to see more just like it, uh, jab that subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell there as well. Uh, ring that bell for all of our notifications of all the future videos. And uh, if you like the video, clearly hit the like button. It really helps get the video out there really helps with the youtube algorithms and it shows other people that you really kind of enjoy what's going on here so uh thanks a lot for watching guys we'll catch you in the next video